Good afternoon folks, I'm Dan. I'm going to add this to my little Builder Basics video series. Um, and it's going to be about materials, sourcing materials, and substituting materials. I'm, I'm speaking directly to the 701 because that's what I have experience with. I realize the Zenith um, 750, the 650, and even the 640 are going to take more materials. And what I'm dealing with is the basically the aluminum materials list. I've gotten some questions both on some of the internet forums plus some private emails asking about materials and I'm by no means an expert of it. I can just tell you what my experience has been with them. One of the questions is can I substitute uh, heavier thickness materials for what I've got? Yeah you can but you're trading that for weight. You know you're trading thickness for weight type of thing. So long term are you saving that much money by you know in exchange for adding a little bit more weight? I don't think it's that good a trade-off myself, but, you know, to each his own. If you've got material laying there that you've got access to that's, you know, cheap or free, why, yeah, I'd have to decide how much I needed, how much I was going to use, and, and if I was really saving anything by doing it that way. With the exception of a couple of things, everything on the Xena 701 is specified as 6061 T6. There's a couple, of, uh, aluminum-wise, um, there's a couple of pieces that they specify 2024 T3, and I've already gotten those taken care of out of the way, so I don't even really think in the terms of 2024 anymore. Um, everything going into this airplane from here on or from quite a while back, once I took care of that 2024, is 6061 T6. So that's what I'm tuned into is 6061 T6. All your materials from any supplier should be marked. They should have the mill stamping on them saying what the alloy is and what condition is, you know, a T0, T3, T4, T6, whatever the case may be. As far as substituting stuff, I kind of question if it's worthwhile, you know, to save a little bit of money because of cheaper or free materials. Like I say, everything's 6061 T6, and for the complete airframe, for the aluminum parts, it doesn't cost that much. It's not that expensive. When you when you consider that you're going to spend $25,000, $40,000 on an airplane, why, when you look at the cost of the aluminum sheet that goes into that as a scratch builder and the angle and, and even the 4130 steel and rivets and everything, it's a very minimal cost. The majority of your cost is going to be in tooling and in instruments and engine type of thing. The, all the rest of it, you know, everything, landing gear, um, wheels, tires, you know, that type of thing. Radios and all that. So, you, I mean, you, you get the gist of what I'm saying. But when you look at the 701 material list, as far as uh, raw material list for aluminum parts, and this is Zenith's list, and this is Zenith's list for the 701, you use 14 sheets, 4x12 sheets of uh, 16 thousandths, you use two sheets of 25 thousandths, you use one 4x8 sheet of 32 thousandths, a sheet of 40 thousandths, 4x8, 63 thousandths is 2 foot by 4 foot piece, um, 90 thousandths, they specify 2024 T3 is a 2x4 piece, and 125 thousandths is a 2x4, or is um, 2024 T3, and it's a 2x2 two two piece. Those are virtually all your materials. You've got, I think, 80 feet of uh, three-quarter inch extrusion, which should be 6061, um, three-quarter by three-quarter. They specify 93 thousandths. That has not really been readily available, I don't believe, from anybody other than Zenith. The suitable substitute is 125 thousandths, which is what's in my plane. I sourced that locally. Um, so there was no shipping on it. And that's where you run into extra expenses on these is the shipping if you're shipping them from aircraft sprues or you know, whoever the, the case may be. When you get into full lengths or even 10 foot lengths, why you're going to pay, um, you're paying a freight charge on those. You're not paying UPS shipping. You're, those have to be freighted. So that's cost prohibitive to do that. I sourced those locally. Um, I believe when I bought them, they were about 90 cents or a dollar a foot type of thing. Um, there again, I sourced them locally, didn't cost me anything. If you look at them from Spruce just now, I looked, they're $1.10 a foot for that uh, 125 thousandths. Um, but freight's going to kill you on those. So you need to source those locally. That's standard 6061. Um, most of the metal suppliers, that's a stocking item. That's not even a special order or anything. That's something that the, almost everybody's going to have on their, on their shelf. And there again, make sure they're roll stamped 6061 T6. Um, 
they they should be mill rolled or mill stamped on there right from the from the manufacturer so anytime you get whether it's sheet whether it's angled it's always going to have those markings on it 16 thousandths you use 14 sheets it's 90 dollars a sheet 25 thousandths two sheets they're 128 dollars a sheet uh 32 thousandths four by eight sheet is 60 you know, 70 dollars 40 thousandths uh, 4 by 8 sheet is 85, 63 thousandths 2 by 4 is 34 dollars, um, 90 thousandths, well 90 thousandths, 125 thousandths, I priced those out of 60, 61 instead of 2024, so these prices are not accurate, but they're 48 dollars and 32 dollars, so it's probably a hundred dollars for those two as opposed to 80 dollars, I, I don't know, I'm guessing there, but anyway, in that not including your three your three quarter angle, which is going to add a hundred dollars, eighty dollars, eighty eight dollars. Um, you've got forty one thirty, which is going to add about another four hundred dollars, and sixty sixty one tube. You're going to add about another hundred dollars in. It. Before you add those in, you've got seventeen hundred eighty five dollars. So, for less than three thousand dollars, why you're going to have that's all the materials for the all the aluminum materials, well, and the steel materials for the fuselage itself. Um, so less than three thousand dollars or three thousand dollars even if you piecemeal that together and pay shipping on um on flat sheets to have them shipped in if i'm ordering from spruce i have them roll it you know they can roll up to i think thirty two thousands um i've always had them roll materials uh a box is usually about fifty dollars to be shipped in so if you've got three or four sheets in a of six of Sixteen thousandths in a box. Why so you still only spent fifty dollars shipping there? If you piecemeal them out, you still only got a thousand dollars in shipping in that in that flat sheet. So for less than for four thousand dollars or less, you've got your complete airframe, and you still have rivets and stuff like that. But uh, but so why why nickel and dime it and and add extra material or try and substitute something that may or may not be suitable? Um, it's just too easy to to order what you want um most things can be sourced locally you may have to look for them um and some people won't want to deal with you because you're just a little guy and you want you know four lengths of three quarter inch angle iron or or uh, aluminum angle um or because it's going into an airplane um my guy down here at pacific steel knows i'm building an airplane and he actually thinks it's pretty cool so every time i go in he says well is this for the airplane you know um so I, I've got a good source there, but those are everywhere. You can find those places no matter where you are, I think, at least in the United States. So, yeah, what it says to use, make sure you track down the good stuff, make sure it's marked the way it's supposed to be marked so you know you're actually getting what you're, what you're supposed to have and what you're buying. Um, and keep building stuff. You know, it's, it's not that difficult. And if you find these videos helpful, you might want to hit that subscribe button. And if you hit the bell notification, you'll know when I put out a new video. Any comments, suggestions, leave them in the comment section for me below. And thanks for taking the time to watch.